right? So when we are dealing with complications of laparoscopic earlier repair, we are dividing this into perioperative, early postoperative and late complications. Now perioperative could be just due to the general anesthesia that we use or the general uh, problems of laparoscopy and we're talking about things like DVT or whether the patient is having a pulmonary embolism. All these things uh, I'm not going to be going into too much detail of the general complications of laparoscopy. But when we are dealing with inguinal hernia repair by laparoscopy, the other points that are here are very, very important. Vascular injuries can happen, nerve injuries can happen, visceral injuries as well as spermatic cord injuries. So, now when we are talking about TAPP, that's the transabdominal preperitoneal repair, injuries can start as high up as the first point of entry, right? So, in 2015, a Cochrane review was generated, which evaluated multiple factors involving the safety of whether to do an open entry, which is the modified Hassan's, or a closed entry using a varus needle. And they found there was absolutely no difference in the rate of major vascular injury or a solid organ injury or hollow viscous injury. And this is not something limited to only inguinal hernia repair. This is a laparoscopy in general. So, reported rate of major entry injury was uh, 1 to 8 injuries per 1000 attempts. The choice between open or closed entry is based on two factors. Number one, is the patient an amenable uh, patient to have a virus inserted inside or should an open approach be um, chosen for this patient. Number two and more importantly is the surgeon preference and this is something that we have to keep reiterating. If you've been trained to do an open entry, stick with an open entry as long as you don't have complications. If you've been trained to use a virus, stick with the virus needle entry. Now this is a video I have um, borrowed and uh, this is a patient who is planned for a transabdominal preperitoneal surgery. So uh, what is happening here is there is a TAPP planned for this right inguinal hernia and the patient has also got a 1 centimeter umbilical hernia. So the patient, the surgeon has decided to cut through the umbilical hernia and insert the first trocar. So he goes in and he starts to do his preperitoneal dissection where the peritoneum is divided and he starts to do these and then he notices at the periphery of his vision there is a, a lot of blood present in the pelvis, the uterus uh, is, uh, the pouch of Douglas is having blood and he seems to see, notice a huge retroperitoneal hematoma. Now, this is a very scary situation because right now the patient could have a problem. The BP is dropping, the pulse, ra the pulse rate is still uh, somewhat okay, right? And he has identified that there is a uh, injury to a vessel in the retroperitoneum. So, what he has done over here is to contain the wound Okay, right? And he has considered uh, going ahead with a laparotomy to contain that vascular injury. But instead, he chooses to put pressure uh, directly on that uh, point which it has opened and luckily it has settled down quite amenably for this patient.